Good evening, Malaysia and followers from around the world. Our guest for tonight is Datuk Professor Dr. Adiba Kamruzaman. She was the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Malaya, as well as an adjunct professor, associate professor at the prestigious Yale University in the United States. She is trained in internal medicine and infectious diseases at the Monash Medical Center in Australia. And joining us tonight are my two comrades in media, Dato Dr. Hushamuddin Yaakob and Tan Sri John Jaffa. Welcome on board, sir. Now, um, Professor, let's start off with this. You know that uh, some of us have said that uh, Malaysia has lost its plot. Uh, we started off in MCO1 with just uh, a double digit numbers. Um, and that uh, many of us felt that we did a good job. But from then onwards, because of the uh, Sabah elections, the numbers started to increase and it has been downhill since then. But apart from the um, Sabah elections, what is the reason for the continuous slide and the huge numbers that we have now, Professor? Yeah, good evening, Dr. Sri and um, Dr. Samuddin and Tan Sri Johan Jaffa. I'm feeling a little nervous as if, you know, I'm, I'm on hard talk, but times three, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so th thank you for having me this evening. So um, what, what is the, the reason for our um, current pandemic? Yes, you mentioned that, you know, we actually did really, really well with um, the first MCO where the original, where the source of infection was the public cluster, if you recall from uh, a year ago. And then, um, you know, the, the numbers were really flat and then we had the Sabah elections. What happened subsequently is I think a completion of a number of things. So we, we were not able to bring the numbers down from the Sabah elections because, um, it was quite dispersed. The, the public uh, cluster was, you know, one cluster. It was relatively simple to do the contact tracing, even, you know, many generations down. But with the Sabah cluster, you had little clusters uh, everywhere. That's number one. And number two, it also, we, also, it, we also saw the rise in um, factory-related clusters. Uh, we were a little later compared to Singapore and we were smarting how Singapore was not doing so well and, you know, but bang, it happened to us, right? And I think the factory clusters have continued to be a source of, uh, of infection. And, and you have to remember that the, the migrant workers, some live in... Um, specified dormitories in, from, from big companies, but the smaller companies, they live in, within the communities. So from the factory clusters, what happened is, I think it spilled over to the community and henceforth, uh, you know, became small clusters uh, themselves. And, and, and the migrant workers, I mean, some of the factories also have local workers and all that intermixing then, then provides uh, further infection. The third more, most recent source of infection is, uh, and then we have the community spread um, and, and during Ramadan, you know, everybody let their guards down, the, the surahs, the traways, the, the visiting, um, because from, from the latest figures, it looks like a quarter of the infection uh, now comes from community clusters. So, you, you've got all this going on, and, and at the same time, earlier this year, Ministry of Health decided to uh, reduce uh, testing, uh, and, and in fact, decided not to do testing amongst people who are thought to be uh, asymptomatic. So we, we kind of took our foot off the brake, um, and all these things collided to uh, you know, result to where we are today. Ah, Professor, I, uh, let's go back uh, to history a little bit. Um, you, your team, basically, the Nipah Virus uh, and Cephalitis team, uh, won the Merdeka Award. That was in 2008, I think? 19, no, a lot longer, oh, than, longer that. than that. Okay. 1998. Oh, 1998. Okay, yeah. for the research on the Nipah virus. Okay. Of all the viruses known to human beings, uh, even uh, you remember the... Um, 
Spanish flu back in the early 20th century. Uh, then we have Ebola, we have uh, Nipah, we have SARS. Yeah? Uh, of all these viruses, which one do you think this is the most lethal and the most dangerous of all the viruses that have been known to men? From in, in, in the form in terms of mortality, it is not. I mean, you know, like here in Malaysia, it's still um, our mortality rate, case fatality rate is you know between one to two percent at the most, I think, depending on, on where uh, you are. Whereas uh, Ebola has a very high mortality rate, mm -hmm. uh, Nipah had an extremely high mortality rate. Um, you know, in the 20, 30 percent um, thereabouts. Um, so in terms of mortality, uh, it is not as high. And now that we have uh, treatments uh, for uh, severe COVID-19, you know, uh, we have treatment with steroids, we have treatment with a drug called uh, Josilizumab. Uh, there is, you know, we, we know what to do better um, so the, the mortality can also be reduced. But the problem with um, the SARS-CoV-2 is because of that silent infection in about 40% of people. So it spreads really easily. And uh, so when you have more and more people getting infected, so those who are above 60 with diabetes, with who are overweight, um, then you get the severe form of disease. So a lot more people will unfortunately die if you know proportionally more people get infected. So that therein lies the problem. And, and if I can give you a very frightening projection from the IHME, uh, from the University of Washington that does this uh, modeling and projection, this is from their policy brief from May 21st for Malaysia, yeah? in if I can read, uh, the daily deaths in the last week increased to 61 per day on average compared to 39 the week before. Um, the daily death rate is greater than four per million in Japan and Mongolia. Um, Where is the projection? Okay. Um, in our reference scenario, which represents what we think is most likely to happen, our model projects 21,000 cumulative deaths on September 1st, 2021. Oh. Um, this represents 17,000 additional deaths from May 17 to September 1st, and the daily deaths will peak at 220 on July 28. So although the percentage uh, number of people who die out of this disease is relatively small <laughs> compared to say SARS-1 and uh, Nipah, but because lots and lots of people are getting infected, naturally we're going to see more deaths, mm -hmm. especially when the health system is overwhelmed, yeah. you know. Uh, so Dr. Adiba, uh, we are now coming to the end of uh, May. Uh, over the next uh, few months, uh, what's, your, what's the projection the worst case scenario for Malaysia specifically. Yeah, so this is this is the uh, projection from IMHE, which does this modeling, um, and uh, the, just like what I said, they, they expect to see um, you know 29,000 cumulative deaths, um, and and the daily deaths will peak at two hundred and twenty. So many many more infections. Yeah. Yeah. And then COVID-19 will be the number two cause of death in Malaysia uh, very soon after heart disease. Usham, you have a question? Okay, uh, Professor, you know that um, we have been told to, act to, to have um, self-discipline, uh, self-restraint, uh, self-lockdown. I know that it's very hard for Malaysians because that, you know, you use the word, you took the food off the break. And this has happened num numerous times. We took our food off the break, then we went on a holiday in December, we celebrated Christmas, and then the numbers went up. Then we, we decide to go back to normality, and then soon we have Ramadan, and then we go back, we keep on going back, we keep on lifting the uh, flexibility, because we felt that, look, the economy needs to be um, 
needs to go on. Uh, livelihood uh, needs to, to be safe, you know. And we cannot continue to lock ourselves up because the, we need to save the economy. Uh, but the result is that um, Malaysians are very poor in self-discipline. And every time the government tries to be flexible, the numbers go up. Now, we know what is staring in front of us. The numbers, the projection looks uh, frightening. What would be the best way forward? Yeah, I think, you know, it, we, 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 we're in a, what, what do they say, between a rock and a hard place. Um, yeah. So, um, right now, I think right now, where the numbers are um, sky high, we, we almost have no choice but to um, have a much strict, strict, stricter lockdown. Again, with this uh, IMHE, uh, projection and they've looked at ICU beds, etc. We're at a critical, we, we don't even need the Masalis to tell us, we know that we are at a critical stage uh, in terms of ICU bed um, utilization. So using those two uh, matrices, one is the hospital uh, system and the other is the absolute numbers. I, I, I think we have uh, right now no choice uh, but to be much, much stricter in our closure. You know, if, if the, because a, a half-hearted measure is actually going to prolong the pain. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you're not going to save the economy by having uh, X number of cases bubbling along. Uh, yeah. You look at Australia, you look at, I mean, of course, you know, it's, it, it's a, different situation there. They, they're an island, they have plenty of money, but the strict lockdown um, reduces uh, the numbers very quickly. And then put a system in place. I think, you know, one, one of the issues with, with Malaysia is we, we lock down, but we don't have a good exit strategy. We, we open up too quickly. We don't, uh, we don't get you know, industries and, and schools and, you know, places where infections are likely to happen adequately ready um, to respond to when the numbers come back up. So we just let the numbers um, increase and then, boom, we have to close again. You know, I think um, we, we, we really have to look at our data, where are the infections coming from? And really, really focus on those. Um, and it's still, you know, construction sites, uh, factories make up 20%, religious uh, gatherings make up 18%, the community 25%. So we, we have to really understand where the infections are coming from. And also in terms of geographic location, it may be that we don't need a strict lockdown for the entire country. I mean, Perlis is doing fine, thank you very much. You know, but in, in states where it, the infections are, you know, really rapidly increasing, we, we may not have a choice because if we let it carry on, um, it's going to be a lot harder to rein it back. I am one of the first person who used to say no to lockdowns, but, it has when it has to be done. It has to be done, unfortunately. Uh, professor, otherwise... professor, you seem to be um, uh, you you are, you believe in in total lockdown uh, when things really get bad. Yeah. Okay, but we You're have right. to balance between saving life and saving livelihood. So in a situation like Malaysia, it is not easy. For instance, the government for the government to decide on total lockdown. Uh, people have to leave, people have to work. Uh, so you see, we are talking about millions who are working, uh, you know, I mean, they have the little businesses, they are doing things that, you know, uh, to, to earn their living basically. And I, I don't think the government would have enough money to support Machikia all the while and all the time, which is almost impossible. So uh, is there any a particular country or particular areas where we can learn or emulate the system or the policy uh, that is both uh, practical, pragmatic, at the same time, medically speaking, basically yeah, you are yeah. saving life and saving livelihood at the same time. Yeah, yeah. As, as I said, Tansri, I'm, I'm the last person to, to uh, you know, really, really suggest lockdown because uh, I, I've met a lot of patients who've in, in my clinic who've lost, uh, you know, their income, who, who are really, really struggling. 
So yes, I think there are measures that we can do. First of all, we need to uh, you know, better understand. We, we, we know now, a year on, we know now how the infection um, you know, transmits. And, and we need to take advantage of our climate. So for instance, the Machikia, uh, the, 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 uh, the Pasatani, for instance, can go on. Yeah, I think you, some of you may have seen pictures in, in Myanmar of uh, Pasatani. Uh, I think this was before the, um, the coup okay. in, in car parks, you know, and, and just as long as you distance them and you have a system where people are not so close to one another, life can go on because out there, outdoors, it's so, so much safer. Likewise, with restaurants, you know, but I think with restaurants, we need to be a little bit careful because they tend to be small and, and yeah. uh, you know, the ventilation is poor. But if they're willing to have the, and, and people are willing to come, have the uh, tables outdoors or, or at the mama stall, I think, you know, just improve the ventilation, but you need to reduce the number of people coming. So, so if we put our heads together and understand um, the, the transmission dynamics and all that, our SOPs can be better, um, uh, you know, outlined um, so that life can go on. But, but currently, because the numbers are so high, it may be that a short, sharp uh, yeah. lockdown so that we can find all the cases and isolate them so that we don't continue to have these smoldering um, fires that will you know, erupt again as soon as we open up, I, I think that might be what's needed. Because right now, Ministry of Health just start cukup kaki dan tangan to go and do all the contact tracing. So... Um, but that's the problem, isn't it? That's the problem. Basically, uh, we are putting small fires, putting out, trying to put out uh, small fires, and then the, as, as you can see, things are not getting any better. But at the same time, it has a lot to do with Malaysian style of uh, discipline. Lah, kan? Kadang -kadang kita ni pun ada problem tu juga, kan? Yeah, but yeah. you know what? I think we, we also need to stop blaming the rakyat. I mean, you know, uh, they are tired. Uh, the the you know there's the pandemic fatigue is a real thing. One of the most important things, the success that you see in other countries, is when everybody is united for a common purpose, when there's unity, and when there's trust in the government. I think yeah. those three elements are missing here in Malaysia. We had that in the first MCO. You know, you know the rakyat sure that they would listen to authority everybody stayed home everybody was glued to the tv to look at the numbers coming down and cheered when we reached zero so so malaysians you know uh, but but we we shouldn't be talking down to them we should yes. you know empower them you know right now i think the rakyat do things for the wrong reason. They don't go out because they takut kena tangkap. You know, they don't do this because because of the fines. Until and unless everyone, you know, takes their responsibility and 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 do it for the right reason. And I think this is where the media comes in. You know, not enough is being, uh, you know, mm -hmm. to to engage the right in language and that they understand in principles that they understand. You know, it's no use someone like me talking in, P to, in PJ, talking about ventilation and all that. I have to go down to Kota Baru and catch at Klata and say, hey, you know, rumah kecil-kecil tu jangan lah 20-30 orang ada duduk dalam rumah tu tingkat tu. You know, but in so, so everybody needs to play their part. And I think that's another thing that we haven't done well enough, which is engage the community. Everything is top down from Putrajaya. You know, we need to really mobilize uh, the community to to meet people where they're at, really. Uh, professor, <laughs> professor, yes. um, there was a statement made by a um, political leader. Uh, he said that a lockdown may not be a good idea for, for the B40 groups who stay in the flat uh, with uh, with two rooms, you know, and a family of six or seven, because uh, ventilation, poor ventilation, would also be a problem for the spread of the virus. Is that medically correct? 
Yes. So, you know, if, if there's one thing about this COVID-19, it is the, it really highlights the inequalities in our society, right? Countries that are unequal are struggling with, with COVID-19 more than countries that, that are, uh, have a more equal society. So that, that is true. And I think, um, you know, uh, this is what we struggle with when we have a, a mother who's positive, what do we do with the other six people to prevent them from getting infected when they live in a, in a PPR flat? Um, so uh, this is where, you know, uh, the isolation uh, quarantine places uh, play a role um, to provide, you know, an alternative for people temporarily, um, but not for the you know, I think right now what, what we're doing is making everyone go to the, the Maeps place and, and causing, um, you know, and overwhelm, the system is there, it's overwhelmed and creates its own problems. So, um, yeah. Professor, uh, in a situation like this, you need a general, uh, particularly one person who actually run the show. Um, so you look at it how things are, people seem to be confused who is leading the whole uh, uh, jihad lah, basically yeah, to fight this uh, COVID. Are we in the state where we, we are basically, uh, you know, I don't like to use the word, but the art of muddling through, trying to solve one problem after another, and, and, and in the end, uh, we end up with more problems. So basically, on a scale of one to 10, where do you think where is that position? Uh, should you grade uh, the our performance as far as managing the COVID nineteen is concerned? Are you Tansri, you're trying to get me into trouble? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a government service. Um, it well, comes from the left ventricle of my heart. <laughs> so um, there are things that that we have done well, and I guess. Uh, we, 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 did, we did well in, in the beginning. No one can doubt that. But, uh, you know, as, as I said, a, um, uh, you know, a, a collision of um, several different things. Um, we, we perhaps haven't um, been strict enough with, you know, with the sources of infections, for instance, the factories, the prisons. We haven't fully dealt with, with those things. Um, and I think that the health ecosystem definitely can be improved. Um, right now, uh, you know, my poor colleagues in, in Ministry of Health, particularly those, those at PKD are expected to do the testing, the contact tracing, the vaccine rollout. We haven't engaged the private GPs uh, enough. We haven't engaged the, the, well, we are starting to engage the private hospitals, but it needs to be a much more holistic, uh, you know, comprehensive, manner. So I think, uh, and we, although we have my Sajatra, um, I think we haven't uh, utilized digitization um, to its maximum capacity. Um, uh, how Taiwan, how South Korea uh, have done well thus far is through impressive use of uh, digital technology. Um, we have the capacity to do that. We have the technology to do that. It's just, you know, it, it needs to be tweaked to make it really functional. For instance, the home monitoring can be digitized. Um, we do it at our hospital, but, you know, it hasn't been taken up nationally. Um, so, so there are many examples. Um, but also, I think what, what you were alluding to, Tansri, um, you know, I think that public messaging is very, very important. And uh, the number of, of conflicting messages that come out from ministers has just led to the mistrust. You know, the number of U-turns, the number of uh, sudden uh, declaration of SOPs, you know, that, that leads to the frustration and uh, anger. It's as if we, we haven't planned. So, which, which brings me to a point, I think it's, the strategic planning that seems to be missing. You know, we now we've announced a, uh, some kind of a lockdown, but what happens next? Where is the blueprint, you know, of what is the matrix by which 
we will reopen and, and when we reopen, how will we reopen? You've seen the, for, for all its mistakes in, in the UK, at least now they have rightly or wrongly some kind of uh, clear sort of uh, timelines uh, for which the, the, the UK right yeah, can, can work towards. But, but we don't have that. You know, we, we, we just at all, you know, listen to the news tomorrow, there may or may not be a lockdown. So, so you know, that's why people are scrambling to do things. So I think a, a blueprint, a strategy moving ahead is so, so sorely needed. Um, when, when President Biden um, came on board, I think within days they had a, uh, a, a blueprint for the COVID-19 uh, response in the US. And guess what was the number one item on that strategy? Yours. I'll send Yours. you a, a, a queraya, a tap of queraya. Any of you get it right? Professor, uh, sorry, uh, Professor, you sound, you sound, you sound marvelous. Vaccination no, first. You sound marvelous when you you are less diplomatic. Now, where do we go from here? <laughs> Wait. Okay. The the answer is. Vaccination first. Nope. The oh. answer is regain the trust okay. of the US people. We did it. We did it, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I said, if you don't have uh, people, you know, everybody needs to be <coughs> rowing in the same direction, um, yeah. which we, I think, sadly don't have at the moment. But, but Professor, in a follow-up to your, uh, to your uh, remarks, um, most of the uh, leaders, uh, whether officials or politicians, uh, who are making these uh, statements daily, they have been there since uh, MCO1. Uh, they are already more or less experienced and they should know what they are doing because they sit in the uh, National Security Council. They, they should not be making U-turns and uh, contradicting statements. They sit next to each other. So I wonder well, how can this happen now? Um, I'd like to ask a question. I'd like uh, to be a fly on the wall in that and <laughs> uh, meetings as well. Okay, to, to someone who, who's an infectious disease uh, expert like you, okay, I know I, as a loyal Malaysian, I live in fear, really terrifying that one day uh, we may just have this Malaysian variant. Oh my God, I don't think I can handle it. We have heard of the Indian variant, which everybody gets upset. Wuhan variant, people get upset. Would, what happens if we have a Malaysian variant? What do we do to prevent this from happening? Vaccination. Okay. Vaccination. Um, you know, variants occur when there's a... I mean, sorry, Dr. Sri, I don't want to induce sleepless nights okay. uh, to you, but, uh, you know, who's to say that we don't have it? We don't have a very good surveillance, uh, mm -hmm. genomic surveillance system in place yeah, I believe, you know, talking to my colleagues in the lab, I believe, you know, mm. um, there is a uh, move to do it, but I, I'm not sure that we, we are really doing it as quickly as we should. It, once again, it's not that we don't have the, the scientific capacity to do this. It's, it's about working together. It's about resource. It's about focus. Um, from my own university's uh, lab that we are looking at, um, the genetic mutations from the patients who are admitted to, to my hospital, the numbers look concerning. Um, the, the team is uh, doing the full genetic sequencing now, but just based on the mutations that they see, um, you know, it is, it is a worry. Um, so back to your question, how can we stop this? It's stopping the infections and vaccinating. There's no two ways about it. The, the, the virus will mutate when there's a lot of it going around. Yeah. Okay. Professor, well, are you in any way? Uh, okay. oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Uh, that, 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 please. That, that, okay. please. Since Tans Edu Prof mentioned pasal vaccination, can? So my observation, so because I want to address this to the Malays especially, eh? so maybe Prof can speak in Malay juga. Okay. Because uh, kalau saya perhatikan, kalau di vaccination center yang AstraZeneca punya, saya tengok Melayu tak ramai. Kan? Itu satu isu. Melayu tak ramai even di city centers. Tapi non Malays ramai yang ambil vaccination. Kalau kita tengok problem di Kelantan pula, tadi since we are both Kelantanese, 
and first time I heard you. <laughs> we heard last week 10,000 Kelantanis didn't turn up for their vaccination appointment. So, what is the root cause of this problem? Yeah, so this? Datuk saya rasa orang Melayu ni mungkin uh, cepat percaya bila bila WhatsApp message yang bukan-bukan tu disampaikan baca dah belum belum apa lagi dah percaya you know uh, macam dah jadi full time job for me kalau dapat uh, message yang mengarut-mengarut ni saya akan balas tolonglah check website dulu and more often than not it will be from some fake news website yeah. okay itu yeah. satu um, so that the inquisitive mind nak, nak make sure that uh, you know perkara-perkara yang tak betul ni uh, betul-betul betul atau tidak is not that cepat saja percaya okay. dan kedua i think orang orang kita ni uh, correct me if i'm wrong tapi we are very fatalistic you know dah tak de nak buat macam mana uh, uh, you know dah dah Tuhan bagi umur setakat tu, nak buat macam mana, you know, there, there's no sort of uh, uh, incentive lah to, 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 to do something about it. I'm sure, uh, you know, our religion doesn't teach us to do that, tapi yeah. kita punya interpretation ni, uh, dah nak, you know, our interpretation of kadar and kadar is, is a bit uh, off, I think. Um, then, uh, uh, Ketiga, uh, ialah the, 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 nak, yang percaya kepada fake news ni, ni cepat sikit uh, daripada uh, bangsa lain. Uh, and, and maybe we don't read, we don't read um, enough of the right and get the right information. Yeah. So how to overcome this? So, uh, like I said tadi, orang macam saya ni tak guna kalau pergi kalau pergi cakap uh, dekat orang kampung because they say, alah, you know, apa dia tahu kan. Um, so, I think we need to really engage uh, dengan um, ketua-ketua kampung, dengan tu imam, get them to, to buy in dulu. Um, and, and then... Uh, you know, get get everyone to to believe. So, but the only cepat sangat percaya the I, I think the ability to to do that risk assessment. Yeah, betul. Um, several of these vaccine ada some uh, uh, serious side effect. Tapi side effect dari I mean, I mean the 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 serious uh, effect dari COVID nineteen in many 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 times more than uh, the side effect daripada the vaccine. So, uh, those are the facts yang kita nak kena share dengan uh, orang-orang kita. Um, tapi like like I said, uh, Dato, we, we need to meet them where they're at. Mungkin uh, kita kata, uh, kalau uh, kita, you know, we, have, we set targets. Di daerah Kuala Krai, kalau 80 orang, 80% um, yang dah yang, yang berumur lim, lebih daripada 50 tahun uh, di vaksin, kita boleh buka masjid dengan surau uh, again. Kita boleh buka kedai kopi again. So people have a target to work towards, you know. And then maybe lah juga, I don't know how ethical this is, so or boleh ke tidak, but hanya dengan ada pasport uh, vaksin, you are allowed to go to masjid uh, and uh, and surau. How about that? You know, yeah. we really need to to uh, to meet them where they're at. And 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 also, vaksin ni bukan benda baru. Masa nak pergi umrah tu dapat flu vaksin, dapat meninggal COVID vaksin, tak pula tanya huh? banyak soal. Oh, eh? Ini jahit. Saja. <laughs> Tapi sekarang ni banyak soal pula. Saya tak faham. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, Professor. tak suri dari apa? Profesor, pusam, pusam. saya nak tanya Profesor, ah, uh, are you in any capacity uh, in part of the task force ataupun penasihat, lembaga penasihat, majlis penasihat uh, COVID-19 kebangsaan or something? Only via Twitter. Tak <laughs> <laughs> bertauliah. <laughs> penasihat tak bertauliah. Oh, yeah. Maksudnya Tapi bukan dalam ada, satu jawatan kuasa ataupun dalam majlis ataupun dalam only the Selangor task force only and the, the rest uh, at my hospital dan as i said penasihat tak bertauliah melalui twitter <laughs> uh, professor adiba yes. um, 
there has been some uh, criticism that says that the NPRA right, uh, has been working really slow. We only have uh, Pfizer, uh, Azac and Sanovac. Uh, so questions uh, have arise. What about uh, Sinopharm? What about Sputnik? What's taking so long? Uh, even for Moderna, what's happened? Your views? Um, I think the NPRA has always been a very cautious organization, uh, rightly so, because, you know, and I think learning from um, other previous, particularly the dengue vaccine, um, the, they have been, um, you know, cautious. But we are in a pandemic. We're in a serious, serious pandemic. My view is that... Um, vaccines that have received emergency use license from WHO should just then be quickly endorsed by our government. You know, the, the WHO themselves take some time to review all the dossiers from uh, the different pharmaceutical companies for the vaccines. Um, you know, you've got the FDA, you've got the, the EU uh, agencies who have all gone through um, you know, similar stringent um, assessment of the, the scientific literature. So I think my, my personal opinion is uh, as, that's what the WHO EU, EU, EUA list is for anyway, for countries to adapt very quickly. So, um, so on that list are things like Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, Sinopharm. Sinovac is actually not on that list yet, neither is Sputnik. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Hushan? Johan? Uh, nampaknya lah, setakat ni lah. Yeah. Um, nampaknya macam kita belum jumpa cahaya di hujung terowong lah, Prof. Aduh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. nampak, Pessimistic, yes. Kita nampaknya masih lagi berada dalam situasi <coughs> yang yalah, yang agak merisaukan lah. You know? Uh, you know, we have to be very frank about it. I mean, we have to be... Yeah. Uh, open about it. We have to accept the fact. Uh, dalam keadaan sekarang ni, macam tadi Prof cakap, orang pun dah macam dah apa nama ni, kata orang pandemic fatigue lah. Orang pun dah penat. You know, been very tiring for the last one and a half years. You know, it is not easy. Uh, people want to to move on with their life. They want to you know get back to the old things that they used to. You know, okay lah. Kita kata ini norma baru lah. Eh? Tapi where do we go from here? How how do you expect apa nama the government yeah. and the people uh, working together to ensure that we come to a level with some semblance of uh, normalcy lah eh? yeah. macam yeah. macam yeah. yang dikata macam di UK sekarang dah nampak ada banyak perubahan yeah. di US dan sebagainya yeah. is vaccine the solution the only solution to that problem um i you know unless we with the us uk or israel um where you know the rollout and the the supply um was is uh, very very good i'm afraid vaccine is not going to be our solution in the immediate term i think yes perhaps towards the end of the year we will see light at the end of the tunnel um through the vaccination program no doubt about that because uh, impressive results from these three countries in how the vaccination rollout reduced deaths, reduced uh, hospitalization. The US uh, is reopening, UK is reopening, Israel is reopening. So no doubt vaccine is one of the answers. But what do we do in the, in the interim? Yeah, because we're only getting like 1 million doses uh, a month or, or thereabouts. The answer, I think, is in testing. We need to make testing much, much more widely available than it is right now. If you, like, like the three of you, suddenly found yourselves, um, uh, you know, uh, at risk of, of being infected, we should make it totally easy for people to 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 get tested, to self isolate. Um, and if they get they, they start having symptoms to be sent to hospital as soon as possible. In a way, the management of, of the clinical side of things need to be simplified. So 
all Malaysians need to, to, to be aware of uh, what to do when, when they've been exposed. Right now, there's a lot of confusion um, when they've been potentially exposed. You gentlemen knew what to do because uh, you, you're educated and you're informed and you know who to call, right? But for, for, for the rest of the Raya, and, and to be able to do that, the testing needs, as I said, accessible, and there has to be a price control. Right now, the PCR is ranges from 200 to 400 ringgit. There's a lot of people, unfortunately, profiteering from this. And, and that is just so, so sad. The new generation rapid test uh, antigen can be had for, I think, 20 ringgit. Um, and so we, again, need to work with pharmacies, with with uh, GPs to make this test available so people can, can get tested or, or even order the test online. Oh, sorry, interject sekejap. Yeah. Eh. Boleh. Boleh. Roh mention about antigen tadi kan? Hmm. Antigen punya test that cost 20 ringgit yeah. yang, yang sekarang klinik charging about 100 to 140 yeah. ringgit. Cuma how uh, effective is this test? Okay. Uh, so there's always the 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 debate, you know. So for mass screening, for mass screening and for, for screening in general, the RTK currently is good enough, especially this new generation RTK. The sensitivity is getting better and better. Um, and uh, so it's the, the advantage is because you will know the result immediately. And, you know, it's better to err on the side of caution. And if you are positive, you self-isolate. The, the PCR is when you go into hospital and uh, then we can one get the double confirm, lah. Um, especially if we are going to give you, uh, you know, the, the medicine and all that. that so, but right now... For mass screening, RTK antigen is the way good to enough, Because eh? the difference is 20 ringgit versus 280 ringgit for the government. Okay, uh, Professor, we are going to have uh, one last question from each of uh, these two gentlemen and the last say from you. Okay, before I do that, I just have one final question for Professor. Now, we know that the situation will get worse from now. The projections are no good. Okay, we can have a lot of uh, quarantines, but do we... The, do we have enough doctors? Most of them are already in really in a fatigue situation. Uh, opening up vaccine, opening up quarantines is one thing. Opening up hospitals is one thing. But what about doctors? Do we have enough doctors? You, you're absolutely right there, Dato Sri. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so that's why I think for home monitoring, we need to mobilize the general practitioners. And, uh, you know, uh, cluster, let's say if you live in Bukit Gasing, uh, Sansri Johan, you know, identify the GPs who can be the person who will monitor you at home until such time, hopefully not, that that person needs to go to hospital. Um, uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's only 10 to 15 percent of those who will need hospital, of those who are infected will need hospitalization. Uh, the MAIPS my my Center should really be reserved for people like, like we described. Um, you know, those uh, factory workers who don't have anywhere to go and self-isolate, those, uh, you know, living in multi-generational uh, BPR flats and things like that. But those who live in the luxury of Bukit Gasing, I'm looking at Gasing, <laughs> uh, should be allowed to, to, to self-monitor, to monitor at home with the help of, uh, of a general practitioner. Now, the, the, because the thing about COVID-19 is um, to prevent people from going uh, into severe disease and intensive care, we now have treatment for that. We have the, the steroid treatment and we have the interleukin-6 treatment. So if you are being monitored carefully and you, you, you get you know, referred quickly enough, inshallah, you don't deteriorate further needing intensive care. So that's one strategy. The, so I think part of the problem is people are presenting too late um, and, and needing, you know, ventilatory support, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. The human resources specialize the uh, doctors and nurses to man intensive care. Unfortunately, that's a real, real problem. And that's where we need to mobilize the university hospitals, the private hospitals, uh, which to a certain extent, um, 
has already been done, but needs to be coordinated a lot better. Okay, Kusyam, uh, last word from you. Okay, actually not a question. Nah, kalau boleh, uh, doctor, uh, prof boleh bagi satu plea yang very clear in Kelantanese language so that I can take this and, and, and amplify amplify the Kelantanese. Ini ini Kelantan. Tell the Kelantanese off lah. Uh, yeah. Ini ini Kelantanese yang duduk dekat Bukit Gasing ni tau. <laughs> oh, oh. Can I ask the Tansri's question first? I need to, my brain is to switch. Okay. To okay. Mine can be last. Yeah. Okay, I don't have a question okay. actually. I don't have a question actually. It's just that um, uh, you, uh, Professor, you are almost like the ex monk, in fact, uh, uh, a well known expert on infectious diseases in Malaysia. You you are one of a kind. Uh, I, I feel sad because uh, you are not being incorporated into uh, any capacity as an advisor or, you know, to help the government uh, in fighting this scrooge, this pandemic. Uh, I think the nation needs people like you. I mean, you, betul lah, apa nama ni, penasihat tidak uh, bergaji dan sebagainya. But the point is, I think uh, you are very much needed. But unfortunately, probably it is a whole system, and then we are not blaming anyone. It's just that I feel my I I I I feel sorry for the nation. Yeah. Politics, yeah. Yeah. The, the uh, truth is, Tansri, it's not just me. Uh, there are many, many, many people with other expertise. Um, you know, from, from public health, epidemiologists, statisticians, people who are familiar with um, how to work on the ground. You know. Community engagement, I, I keep going back to community engagement because if we're going to vaccinate uh, refugees, we need to work with, with those refugee leaders, you know, so that it's, it's, it's uh, uh, the, the awareness and bringing them is, is done in language and culture that's understood to them. So, so you know, in, in countries where um, the response has been uh, effective is when there is real um, community engagement and all of society response. And it's not just a slogan, you know, um, Cambodia, Vietnam, Bhutan, Kerala, you know, all these countries have much, much less re financial resource than, than we do, but they innovate. They, they uh, you know, they, they really get grassroots community workers to help to, to, to go out there. So, you know, our, our gentra um, elections should be nice. organized to, to, to be useful for, for, for a change and, um, you know, and, and give important information. So, so we have that, we have that system somehow, you know, but they only get pulled out for elections every five years. Now is the time to, to gerakkan that gentra for whichever party you're from lah, kan? Mm. Um, so, so yes, um, there's expertise that's not being used at the sort of advisory level, but also expertise at the grassroots level that could be better mobilized and, uh, and used because like I said, we all need to paddle in the same direction. Right now, everyone's paddling in different directions. Disconnected. <laughs> Disconnected. Okay, Husam, are we ready for, for your message to the Kelantanis? Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I suppose I have to introduce myself first, yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, Pocik-pocik yang pocik-pocik di Kelantan, nama saya Dr. Adiba Kamarul Zaman. Saya sekarang uh, bertugas di Pusat Perubatan Universiti Malaya tapi Ambo besar di Kota Baru. Ambo sedih bila tengok ramai orang kelatet toksi vaksin. Sebab apa lah makcik-pocik. You know, vaksin ni boleh menyelamatkan nyawa. Dengan satu dos pun boleh menyelamatkan nyawa. Tambah lagi dua dos vaksin. Tak so duk dengar lah cerita ngaruk-ngaruk kata vaksin ni membunuh vaksin ni, uh, you know, dari uh, ada magnet, ada Bill Gates punya nak buat duit lah. Boleh ada dengar benda-benda ngarut-ngarut tu. Uh, kita tahu vaksin ni boleh selamatkan nyawa. 
Okay. True Kelantanis. True Kelantanis. Datuk Isyam, Datuk Isyam, kena kena bawa ha. Dr. Profesor Adibah ni ke ke Sinar ni untuk special. Kena, 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 anytime. Ha. Ha, anytime. Bila doktor boleh, kita buat dalam bahasa Malaysia. Ha, InsyaAllah, ha. anytime. Ha, okay. Tan Sri, bergantung pada time Tan Sri dengan ha. time. Saya tak ada prof. masalah. Tumas saya tak boleh kecek Kelantan. Ha, tak apa. <laughs> Hari ni last cakap Kelantan. <laughs> Okay, kita kita bagi translator on on the ticket. Okay. 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 Thank you uh, Professor Adiba for spending time with us. Uh, thank you. Uh, and we hope that uh, Dr. Adiba would move from Twitter Jaya to Putrajaya. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Husham, Dr. Sri Johan, thank you for being part of this discussion to all Malaysians. Please, please, please stay safe, stay home, stay home to watch this program. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, and everybody. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.